Belgian economic players, households, businesses and governments trade among themselves, but also with foreign countries. They're called residents when they live in Belgium and non-residents when they live abroad. Alfarm is a Belgian group active in the chemical and pharmaceutical industry. It exports some of its products abroad. Alfarm wants to manufacture and market a new medicine in more patient-friendly packaging. To do so, it decides to import a machine from abroad for its factory in Belgium. With this import, it's able to produce and package the new medicine. Part of its output will be exported to other countries. However, its employees need to be trained to use and maintain this machine. Therefore, the seller of the machine also sends a technician to train the employees. This is an import of services by the Alfarm Group. These are not the only transactions between Belgium and the rest of the world. Far from it. These days, external trade plays an increasingly important role, and ways of producing goods and services and selling them abroad are changing too. For example, instead of producing the medicine in Belgium and exporting it, Alfarm may decide to build a factory abroad which will sell its products in this country. This is foreign direct investment. In return, some of the profits made by the subsidiary will find their way back to Belgium. In order to finance the construction of a factory in another country, Alfarm may decide to take out a loan with a bank located in that country. In its production process, this factory will use ingredients made by a different Belgian company. It's not just companies and banks that are involved in international trade. Every year, many tourists come to Belgium and spend money in hotels and restaurants, for example. This is an export of services for the Belgian economy. Other people move across the border regularly or almost on a daily basis, cross-border workers. The wages they earn in neighboring countries are income. But there is more. With international markets opening up, flows of money between residents and non-residents have taken on a new dimension. Many Belgian households have invested part of their savings in financial products managed by their bank. The bank may invest a proportion of the money collected in foreign assets, such as shares in non-resident companies. The bank earns income on this investment, which it then uses to pay the households that have invested in the financial products. All these transactions between Belgian residents and non-residents are recorded in a statistical document, the balance of payments, which exists in all countries in the same format. The blue arrows represent the flows on the current account of the balance of payments. These are exchanges of goods, services and income. The outgoing arrows represent Belgium's revenue and the incoming arrows represent its expenditure. The orange arrows represent the flows on the capital account, which include purchases and sales of non-produced, non-financial assets, such as licenses, brand names, or goodwill. The green arrow represent the flows on the financial account. When revenue exceeds expenditure in the current account, a country is said to have a balance of payments surplus. This current account surplus can be used to invest in other countries. Conversely, when a country's expenditure exceeds its revenue, it is said to have a current account deficit. This deficit needs to be funded either through borrowing or through the sale of assets to non-residents. A chronic current account deficit, particularly on the goods and services account, can reflect a lack of competitiveness. This happens when a country's manufacturers and service providers struggle to compete with their foreign counterparts. If a country is not competitive enough, it might repeatedly run up large current account deficits. In this case, its debt vis-à-vis -vis the rest of the world will gradually increase. If its debt becomes too high, its financial position will become fragile, which can in turn make non-residents less willing to invest. In extreme cases, the country is no longer able to finance its current account deficit. It then needs to generate a surplus as quickly as possible, raising the risk of a sharp adjustment in production and employment. Therefore, in the European Union, supervision and prevention of macroeconomic imbalances have been reinforced. The compilation of high-quality statistics is an important aspect of this effort. In Belgium, the National Bank of Belgium is in charge of drawing up the balance of payments. It does this by surveying the economic players in Belgium. 
The balance of payments compiled by the National Bank of Belgium is very useful to citizens, policymakers and researchers in order to understand Belgium's position in the global economy and to analyze balances and imbalances in its external trade. For further information, please visit the National Bank of Belgium's website.